Hi, everybody. Thank you for returning to the Faces in FinOps Part 2 podcast episode with Yusef Ibram, a cloud economics lead at Block. Yusef originally was talking about his organization's FinOps function, his maturity from the crawl walk stages. Is he using AI or automation? And maybe what are some of the biggest mistakes in immature or mature FinOps? In this episode, we're going to be talking about his FinOps journey and what's next and happening. Yusef, thank you so much for returning. Yeah, absolutely. Yusef, let's kick things off. What were you doing prior to joining Block and how did you get into FinOps? Yeah, um, so I had been working in infrastructure strategy for about a year, two years uh, at the first company I joined out of college. And um, I enjoyed it, but you know, didn't really know what I was going through. I was figuring out what infrastructure engineering looked like. I was doing QBRs, I was doing data center reconciliation. And uh, I had a one-on-one -on -one chat with my manager and my manager mentioned at the time that uh, she needed someone to take a look at our cloud costs and start looking at this thing called cloud economics. And we didn't even know what the term was at the time. Um, and I told her point blank, I said, hey, if you don't mind me learning on the job, because I'm starting from zero here, uh, I would love to explore cloud costs. I knew that we had migrated to the cloud. I knew that folks were starting to use it, but I didn't know what it was at all. I kind of knew what EC2 was, but it was still a very foreign concept to me. So lo and behold, you know, my manager took that into consideration. She went, she had a chat uh, with some folks uh, in our department and she came back to me and said, hey, you start on Monday. Welcome <laughs> to the team, uh, come up with the title. And that's how I became a cloud governance analyst focusing on AWS costs. And that was about five years ago. So it was pretty fortuitous. Uh, I saw an opportunity and I took it. And I'm really grateful to my manager at the time for believing in me and giving me a chance to do something I knew nothing about. And we're here five years later. Five years later, and you're a cloud economics lead at Block. What are some of your typical week, day or month look like from a routine for FinOps? Yeah, it's a great question. And I'm sure other folks will resonate with this. There's not really a typical week or month or day. Um, so I can talk about some of the things that I do regularly. But, you know, waking up every morning, I don't really know what's going on besides what I see on my calendar. So um, on a monthly basis, you know, we take a look at our coverage for reserved instances and savings plans. We try to maintain industry standard coverage of about 80% plus on our savings plans. And for our eyes, the less flexible they are, the more judicious we are when purchasing these RIs. So we do that on a monthly basis. Another big thing that we do on a monthly basis is our cloud spend review, where we take a look at not just our public cloud providers, but our major SaaS providers, um, which I will not really name here. Um, and we review the cloud costs there. We look at the highest variances uh, to spend. We take a look at the largest initiatives that are currently in flight. And what we try to do is increase our visibility into what folks are actually doing in the cloud. Uh, I'm sure those of you with very large cloud bills may know that sometimes it's a mystery as to what this random six figure charge may be or things of that nature. So our cloud spend review seeks to really highlight those largest variances and changes to our cloud spend. Uh, currently, we're in the middle of our annual planning process. So a lot of my uh, days uh, currently are filled with budgeting and forecasting conversations, making sure that we understand what net new incremental initiatives are coming down the pipeline and what our organic growth rate targets should be. Um, and as of uh, recently, I have shifted more into kind of a management uh, type role. So a lot of my days are currently spent with meetings, uh, which you know, I would love to get more time on the keyboard and doing some deep diving into our cloud costs, but I'm a pretty stellar team that is able to uh, do that for me. And we trust each other to cover each other's backs in terms of what we do. So we're a two person team and we cover a lot of ground in terms of meeting with teams, meeting with finance, meeting with procurement, figuring out the different personas and what they need and really trying to get ahead and be more proactive instead of reactive as it comes to managing our cloud uh, infrastructure. How critical is it to have an accurate reporting? Well, oh, it's P0. If you don't have accurate reporting, uh, no one's going to trust you. And if no one trusts you, no one's going to believe in you. 
if no one believes in you, it's a lot harder to get them to act on cloud economics initiatives or complex multi-quarter projects. Um, so the main thing that we really look at when we uh, do reporting is I know there's a couple different schools of thought is we show folks their total utilization cost uh, in a net amortized fashion so they can see the discounts and they can see the effect of the centralized rate optimization. I know that there have been some schools of thought out there that say, hey, we show folks undiscounted uh, unamortized costs. So we show them their true consumption without any of the other effects. Um, but without diving too deep into discounts and all of that, uh, certain products have deeper discounts than others. And we want to ensure that folks understand they're utilizing the right products and services at any given moment to maximize both their performance and their price to get to a measure of efficiency. Um, so when it comes to accurate reporting, right, we make sure that our finance team is aligned with what we're showing out in terms of our total utilization cost. Uh, we try to differentiate between what the uh, business ledger may book for any month's account, uh, any month's cloud costs versus what an actual team might see for their total usage costs for any given month. Um, but if we see an inconsistency or an irregularity in our cost reporting, or if we see a report showing $10,000 one day and $9,000 the other day, um, our hackles are raised. We're in problem solving mode. We're in troubleshooting mode. We're trying to figure out what this Delta is because if we have inaccurate reporting uh, or incomplete totals, um, that is our source of legitimacy. And if we can't show legitimate totals, if we can't show legitimate variances, folks won't trust our information. And that erodes a core principle, which is that we are being trusted to show back out, uh, I'm word salad. Um, if we don't have legitimate totals, if we don't have legitimate variances, if there are errors in our data, people don't trust us to accurately bubble up cloud costs. They don't trust our visibility, and then they don't trust our allocation, and then they don't trust our optimization, benchmarking, and performance. Um, so at its core, having accurate reporting is crucial to everything else that we do uh, in cloud economics and FinOps. You're working on budgeting and forecasting right now. Do you find it difficult to accurately budget and forecast cloud costs? Yes, absolutely. Um, as we are in the middle of this data center to cloud migration, uh, we have tried a bunch of different methodologies to try to estimate data center cloud costs or data center costs uh, into cloud costs. How do we translate uh, compute capacity in the data center to EC2? How do we estimate data transfer? If we have a database and a set of tables in the data center, what does that look like in our cloud strategy if we're deploying to multi-region or if we're doing multi-AZ single region. Um, those types of cost estimates are relatively hard. And I won't lie, you know, sometimes we get it wrong. Um, I feel really, really fortunate that our team members and one of our teammates has developed a pretty comprehensive model in trying to forecast what our compute and database capacity looks like in the cloud for our migrations. But other than that, you know, when you're trying to forecast pre-existing cloud spend, there are so many other factors that you have to consider. So really what we try to do is we try to caveat a lot of our growth with our assumptions. We have to be crystal clear on our assumptions. So if an assumption changes, we can make the updates in our cloud model. And we really are trying to figure out how do we tie our budget? How do we tie our growth, not just to our infrastructure uh, cost and our infrastructure trends, but how do we tie that to our top line, uh, top level business metrics? How do we tie it to our business's growth? So we can show that an investment of $1 in infrastructure results in X amount of increase in whatever top level metric we have, whether it's revenue or profit or what have you. So um, yeah, it's very difficult. It's, uh, I like to think it's a lot more art than science in terms of budgeting and forecasting cloud costs. And really what, we're, what we try to do is bucket and aggregate our costs into some higher level of order uh, buckets such as business unit or cost center. And it really depends on what your organization looks at and looks forward to. Um, so for us, what we're trying to do with cost center is bucket all of these applications into a single cost center. So if one application grows, it's not that that application's out of budget or over budget, that cost center owner can sit there and try to balance it out with maybe another application has to slow their growth or they can deprecate another aspect. So it's really all about opportunity cost. And that's what that's the kind of uh, visibility and um, 
kind of strategy we're trying to bring to our budgeting and forecasting. As a cloud economics lead for Block, what are some of, or what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? Uh, it's the culture shift. Um, 18 months ago, folks weren't really asked about their cloud spend. Uh, 18 months ago, there were a lot of applications still in the data center. Uh, folks were not responsible for their costs for their application because it was a fixed cost, it was depreciable, and that was not a question that was kind of bandied about. Uh, moving to the cloud has a whole host of advantages compared to the data center. We don't need to go over all of them ad nauseum here, but uh, one of the other factors in moving to the cloud is folks have a lot more control over how much they're spending and costing the company. Um, so really the biggest challenge we're facing, and this is the first and uh, foremost thing on our minds is how do we get folks who historically have never cared about costs to care about their costs? We have to bring them along for the ride. We have to implement a crawl, walk, run model. We have to let them know that, hey, if you're over budget the first time, that's totally fine. We'll work with you. We'll get some education. We'll get some training. Cloud economics will also seek to understand why you went over budget in case it was a matter of us under budgeting or something like that. Um, and really just kind of shifting the mindset to consider fixed costs versus variable costs and all that comes with it. Um, folks that might spin up a box to test and capacity on, they may not know to spin it down because they didn't have to in the data center. That's a behavior that we are seeking to shift and to change. And so uh, all in all, the data center to cloud uh, culture shift is our biggest challenge right now. And we have some great enthusiastic folks that are really diving headfirst into AWS training and trying to get their certifications and understanding what the differences are between deploying to DynamoDB provision versus Dynamo on demand versus RDS Aurora, or even thinking about Aurora serverless. So folks are curious and inquisitive, and I genuinely believe they want to do the right thing. We need to provide them the right resources, the right strategies uh, so that they can fully embrace the cloud variable cost culture uh, and move away from the data center fixed cost culture. I think the culture shift is actually very key because you indicated in a data center that cost has already been allocated. I can run those servers as long as I like because they're already powered on. I'm already using that virtualized infrastructure. We're within the cloud. It's that I'm just paying for what I use. And it's a mindset that I have to turn something off when I didn't have to turn it off. Yusuf, I'm going to wrap things up with a couple more questions. One of those is, do you have any pieces of advice that you'd like to share with those who are trying to get into the FinOps world, who are in the FinOps world, or just the broader FinOps community? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're curious about FinOps, uh, if you're coming at it from an engineering perspective, or like me, more of a finance, math, economics perspective, um, there's a lot of great literature out there that you can just start reading. AWS's documentation is very thorough, and you'll have to do some digging to find what you need there. But there's also some great blogs, some great foundations, some great organizations out there that have published a lot of FinOps uh, material that I would highly recommend you start reading and reviewing. Uh, there are meetups and there are groups that you can join as well to start learning about FinOps. Um, and it's a pretty active community on LinkedIn as well. So if you're looking to break into the FinOps org, uh, try to start reading, try to formulate some questions. Uh, if you're working and if you're fortunate to have access to uh, AWS or GCP or Azure environment, a cloud environment, um, find out who's responsible for the cloud costs at your organization and go talk to them. Go figure out what their biggest problems are right now. Um, it's an area where I felt very fortunate in that when I broke in five years ago, uh, I was able to ask a lot of questions of folks in my organization, of folks uh, that worked for vendors that had a cloud economics or FinOps kind of footprint. Um, I asked a lot, a lot, a lot of questions. And I would highly recommend that anyone looking to join uh, the FinOps community also start asking a lot of questions as well. It's the best way to learn. Um, just start asking questions and then start learning by doing. That's some actually great pieces of advice, including the LinkedIn. Well, who are some of the most influential people or practitioners in FinOps that, that you should follow? Well, I always get a kick out of Corey Quinn and Mike Julian out of the Duckbill Group. Uh, their content is wonderful. It's written in an easily digestible format. Uh, if you're familiar with Corey Quinn, you know he's got a very unique voice as well when it comes to uh, being out there and talking about cloud FinOps as well. 
so I, I really do like the duck bill group as a, uh, organization that, um, you know, talks about cloud costs in a really interesting fashion. All right, Yusuf, my last question for you. This one's going to be a tough one. So hang tight as I answer. You might have to think about it. Oh, but... no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. Where would you be right now if you didn't need to work? If I didn't need to work right now, I would not be in front of this computer. I'll tell you that much. Um, no offense. Uh, no, I would be <laughs> somewhere outside uh, close to water be it a river or a lake or an ocean. I would have a book um, paperback because I'll probably be trying to disconnect and uh, some sort of snack like chips and a nice cold drink. And, uh, you know, if I'm next to the water, you know, maybe a surfboard. I'll keep uh, failing how to surf out there. I don't think you've really thought about this one all the way down to the chips. Now you're making me hungry a little bit. <laughs> it's almost lunchtime. Well, that's awesome. Yusef, thank you so much for joining us for this awesome episode for Faces and FinOps. Thank you, John. It was a pleasure. All right, everybody. Today's guest was Yusef Ibram, who's a cloud economics lead at Block. This has been another awesome episode and discussion around Faces and FinOps powered by our good friends at ProsperOps. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notify because guess what? The latest episodes will be on our new YouTube channel and a blog post. On until next time.